Welcome back everyone. In this video, I want to talk about five essential tools for image editing that I believe every photographer must have a grasp on. And this is going to make your life a lot easier. I've done a lot of tutorials on this channel covering a wide range of software. We've done stuff on Adobe Lightroom. We've done stuff on Adobe Photoshop. We've done stuff on Capture One. There's a new contender that I'm gonna do a video on probably next week and it is called Luminar. It's made by a company called Skylum and it is a really interesting contender, I think, in the game of image editing. They're on version four now. It's introduced a lot of artificial intelligence stuff. I think it's really cool. I'll put a link in the description if you guys want to check it out. And because I'm working on that video, if you have any questions of anything you want me to cover when I do the video on Luminar, let me know and I will cover it then. But inevitably, anytime that I do a software tutorial, there's always a handful of comments of people saying, hey, this is really cool, but I don't use this software application. Can you do another video showing me how to do it in the software application that I use? And I realized that there's a little bit of disconnect because these five tools that I'm going to show you today, they all, first of all, kind of do the same thing, just different varying amounts of control that you have over what it is that you're editing. And they also appear in all of these software applications for the most part. So if you can get a grasp around the essential tools, I think the workspace really matters less and it's easier to learn something that's done in one application to be able to do it in your own. So without further ado, let's begin with our first tool, which is the histogram. Now the histogram is not a tool that you're going to use to manipulate the image per se. The histogram is more like your speedometer. It's your dashboard. It's your window into what the digital data looks like spread across the light spectrum. And a lot of beginning photographers tend to want to see the histogram look a certain way all the time, and I'm not really into that school of thought. I think that every photographer is going to have their own voice, their own interpretive signature, their own vision, uh, their own intent of what they see an image is looking like. And if you want to learn more on that, I did a whole series of videos on the intention of a photographer in terms of color, in terms of light, in terms of mood. I will link that up here and in the show description. But in this video, I do want to show you what the histogram does and what it will tell you. So if we look at this histogram right here, this is in Adobe Lightroom, we can see this image is very much underexposed. It is way too dark. And this is reflected in the histogram because over on the left-hand side, we're going to see that all of our data is clumped over here and pretty much on the right side, it is empty. So this is telling us that this image is comprised mostly of shadows. We also have a little triangle because Lightroom gives you this. And if you hover over that, it will tell you where your clipping is occurring. Now, when you look at the spectrum of light in an image and what the histogram is going to tell you, you have brightness where things start moving towards pure white, and then you've got shadows where things start moving towards pure black. Now, when they do hit pure white or pure black, they have no detail left in them, and that's what we call clipping. And clipping is not necessarily something you want in your image, so that's what these little warnings will do uh, on a histogram is tell you when you are clipping. So, you know, obviously, if I bring up the exposure slider on here, you're going to see all of that data start moving towards the middle of the image, and thus we end up brightening the image. There's still a big spike here in the shadow detail. And, you know, these things are probably going to be fairly obvious uh, in the actual image. And so I might bring up some shadows to compensate for that just a little bit. And now I have a more balanced image. It is not very contrasty. The color is a little washed out, but I would want to work on this further. But you can see this on the histogram. This is very important. Now, if you look closely at the histogram, you're going to see that there's a bunch of colors that actually overlap one another. And when we get into some of the other tools here, I'm going to show you how you can manipulate color color balance as well. But all these things are visually represented in the histogram, and that's why this is the first most important tool I think everybody needs to know. Now we're going to move on to the second, which are sliders. So I'm going to reset this image, but I think sliders are probably fairly obvious, but I do want to include them in here because they do require an explanation. Now a slider is simply a button and a continuum, and you can either add more intensity of whatever function that slider is labeled as, or you can remove that intensity. So it's just basically here's your continuum of zero, and I can either add or take away depending on what the slider is. What you need to understand is sliders are super intuitive. Most people understand that when something says exposure on the top that they can click on that and either increase or decrease the exposure. Seems fairly obvious. What people don't realize is that sometimes there are complicated algorithms that go behind the sliders. Now sliders are great for quick edits minor adjustments when you're just digging into an image and you just need to do a few things and you really don't care what that algorithm is, they're less useful when you're trying to do something very specific. But I do want to mention sliders because that's kind of what it is. Like if you use Adobe Lightroom, it is very slider heavy. In fact, other than the curves adjustment tool, most of Lightroom is sliders and all of the newer 
additions that they've Adobe has made to Lightroom over the last couple of years, things like the texture tool or the dehaze tool, they're all sliders. And so we don't really know what that algorithm is behind. So the good news is, is it's easy to use. The bad news is, is that when you really want a finite amount of control, it's probably not the greatest choice in the world. So let's dig in to our third tool, which is going to be the levels tool. I'm going to switch over to Capture One for this example, because Lightroom doesn't have levels adjustments, but guess what Capture One does? And levels adjustments can be very powerful. And if you look over here, this is our levels adjustment. And hey, look at this thing they've overlaid behind it. This would be tool number one, the histogram. So you kind of get two in one here. And this is so we can look at the information as we adjust the sliders on here. So this is a black and white image because we're just going to talk about shadows and highlights for just a second. And what we have are we have basically these three lines and they're little handles on each one of the lines. Now, remember on the histogram over here on the left, this represents highlights. And over on the right, this represents shadows. Now, this is a very contrasty black and white image with a lot of dark detail in here. So that's why we see a bigger spike over on the left hand side here. But if I move either one of these handles, if I take the shadow detail handle here and I start moving that in, you're going to notice that it's going to intensify the shadows. It's going to make them even darker until eventually it starts to swallow up the image as a whole. So it's, this is starting to give me a little more control than a slider would because I'm just working with the shadows and bear with me because I'm going to show you some more stuff. And the same holds true for the highlights. If I grab this bottom handle here and I move this over to the left, you're going to see that our highlights start getting more and more intense until they start washing out. And actually you can see visually there's a lot of clipping occurring and uh, there's another histogram up here that's the actual histogram of what the final output is and you can see this big spike here we have got clipped highlights let's reset that for just a second we have a third handle in here which is the midtone handle and I can control the amount of contrast that I have in this image by manipulating this middle handle so typically if I move the midtones towards the highlights we're going to create more contrast and if I move it the other way we're going to make it less contrasty this image is already pretty contrasty but I'll show you what I'm talking about so so if we grab the middle handle and I move this over towards the left, you're going to see that we are going to indeed decrease contrast and the image starts to wash out a little bit. I open up a lot of that shadow detail and if I move it towards the right hand side, we're actually going to make it really dark. So I have essentially several points that I can manipulate. Now, I want to show you something else in Capture One here. We have handles on the top as well, and this will dictate where the black point essentially is or how dark the darkest part of the image is going to be. So let's do that one on the left. If I move this in towards the middle, you're going to see that it starts getting really washed out because nothing is really pure black in that image. It's just kind of darkish. And so let's put that one back and you can also manipulate the highlights too by bringing those down so nothing ever goes to pure white. So between these five tools, controlling levels actually becomes kind of interesting. So if I want to open, let's darken up my shadow. Actually, this is really already contrasty already. So I'm going to open up my shadows just a little bit. Let's create a little bit more contrast. I might bring my highlights in a little bit, make them brighter, bring it this way. Anyway, and you can see, start to see that I'm actually having an impact on this image that has a very different look to it. And I can see a lot of this area back here that was washed out in the original. So for instance, if I do a quick before and after, here's before, here's after, I'm able to open up a lot of detail. Now, this is also achievable in sliders, but you have to do two or three sliders to do it. So sometimes levels is a more interesting way to go. So I'm using a black and white image because I want to explain levels in terms of shadows, midtones, and highlights. And essentially brightness and exposure is what we're looking at. So this is just light and how bright it is. But what's also interesting is if we look at a color image, I can take this a step further. So this is beach scene. This was done on the Fujifilm GFX 100. Let's do a quick edit here. I can see that eh, this image is a little darker than I want it to be and I want a little more punch to it. And if we look at the histogram, you can see over here that everything is kind of sitting in the middle. I don't have any extreme highlight or shadow detail. So the first thing I'm going to do with my levels is I'm going to bring up the highlights a little bit and just make those a little bit brighter. And we can also bring in the shadows some and crunch those down just a little bit and that looks a little better. I might move my midtones around just a little bit for a little more contrast. And if I do a quick before and after, you can see that there was before, it's kind of washed out. Here's after, kind of did what I wanted. And also our histogram is a little more evened out into the full spectrum here. I could work on that some more. Again, this is why I say use your eye because if I bring the shadow detail so those shadows really sit low, I get a really dark sky and a really dark ocean there. And I don't really particularly care for that much darkness in the image. So that's why you want to 
use your eyes on this anytime you can. So the other thing that I want to show you, because this is a color image, not only can we adjust the whole spectrum of light, so to speak, that we've been doing, but you can do this on a per channel basis. A color image is made of three channels, a red channel, a green channel, and a blue channel. And we can manipulate this into each one of those channels. So I'll give you an example here. If I go over to the red channel, I'm just going to bring up midtones in the red channel, or let's actually let's take them down first. And you're going to see that my image starts to become very red. I'm doing this extreme on purpose. This does not look good, but I want to show you what this slider does. So this is more red, obviously. You probably don't want anything this drastic, but you might think, well, I can adjust three different colors with this. Well, actually, you get way more than that. You get six, because if I increase my mids, we're going to actually be taking away red on this channel. And the opposite of red in the color spectrum is cyan. So this is going to get very bluish, very tealish, very cyan the more I move this way. I can adjust this independently for actually each of these three channels. So you have six colors that you can manipulate. You can do them in the midtones, the highlights, and the shadows. So all of a sudden this opens up to a lot of complexity. I have done an entire video on this and I won't repeat it all in the scope of this video, but if you want to watch that and you want to learn how to adjust your color and get different maybe film looks and stuff like that, I'll link up to that video below and up here as well. But this will bring me to our fourth tool, which is going to be curves. So we're back in Lightroom and if you want to find the curves in Lightroom, what you want to do is go over to the development panel and scroll down a little bit and you're going to see this subject here called tone curve. This is a curves tool. Now by default, Lightroom is set up kind of strange and you see all this kind of weird graphics going on as I hover over. And if I scroll down here, I've got sliders. Now we don't want sliders. We want raw curves. So if you want to follow along with this, what you want to do is go down here to the bottom right hand corner here and click this control point box. And this will take all that away and it will allow you just to manipulate the curves directly, which is what I want to show you here. This also exists in Capture One and pretty much every other image editor out there. But this is the way that curves works. We can see that we've got the histogram overlaid here as well. And this was our grossly underexposed image. So everything's kind of sitting over here in the shadow area and not much in the midtones of the highlights. Now, the cool thing about curves is we have basically this diagonal line and I can grab either side of this. So for instance, if I grab the right hand side, this represents highlights. So to brighten this image up, I can just simply click and drag and bring it over and we brighten up that image really quickly. And I could do the same with the shadows if I want to move them this way and make them super dark and super contrasty. It's too much. Um, the other thing you could do is move it the opposite direction. So if I come down with the handle on the right hand side, we're going to get a really washed out image because it's going to lower the point at which whites are actually white. And I can do the same on the left hand side and I can actually raise the point where darks are actually black and see how they're all faded out and washed out. This is how people kind of get that film look sometimes when they're doing post production. So there's a lot of manipulation you can do with just those two handles. Now, the other thing you can do is on the curves, you can simply click anywhere on this line to add a point. So let's add a point to the middle and let's just bring the midtones up. And you can see that we can start adding brightness that way. Probably not enough until I actually really start clipping my whites because this is so underexposed. But this is how you start to add points onto a curve to add manipulation. So I can add as many points as I want. You can do a lot with control points. Now, in order of what I've been showing you so far, we started with sliders, we moved on to levels, and we're constantly with each one of these getting a little more finite control over what we're able to do with the image. So like for instance, even with levels, when you move your midtones around, you only have one control point if I'm translating that to what we're doing on curves. And so there's still an algorithm that's smoothing that out. And sometimes you're dealing with an image that has a little bit of a problem area and curves are really are the best tool for that because they're going to give you the most finite amount of detail. Now, also just like levels, we do have control over, let me go ahead and brighten this image up a little bit. Let's go ahead and flatten the curve. You can right click to do that. And I'm going to bring the highlights up. You can also see that the RGB channels, I can click on this and I can isolate each channel as well. Red channel, green channel, and blue channel. So if I want to add blues, we can go in and make this very blue by increasing the midtones in the blue channel. And the opposite of blue would be yellow. So this works just like those levels. So I can really start to make this more yellow and greenish and you can go and adjust your color balance as such. So again, you have a lot of finite control when you start moving into curves. So We've looked at a lot of things. We've had sl sliders, we've had levels, we've had curves. This leaves me with one more tool, which is going to be color wheels. We're going to move back to Capture One for this. This is one of the more powerful tools that you have in Capture One. You also find it in things like DaVinci Resolve, Adobe Premiere. Um, anyway, if you want to find these, we've been under the Exposure tab at the top of the screen. I'm going to go over to the Color tab. This is where they live, almost down to the bottom. You're going to find this Color Balance tab, and there are going to be three wheels here, and I can actually isolate these into one 
one wheel a piece. It's kind of a different view of the same thing. I'm looking at the three way. I'm seeing them all three at once or I can look at them individually. But anyway, these kind of work the same principle that every other tool we've looked at so far is that we have basically shadows, midtones, and highlights. And what we're looking at here is the amount of tint that we can add to either or any of these three areas. So for instance, in this image, let's say that I want my shadows to warm up a little bit. I can start moving and just grab the knob in the center here and start moving that towards yellow. And you can see that they are going to start warming up. I might actually want them a little bit orange over here. Now we have just kind of moved the tent. There are two more sliders here that you can fine tune your detail with over on the right, sorry, the left hand side of the color wheel here, you're going to see this is essentially saturation. So if I want to dial that up or back, I can control the amount of saturation that I have. And then brightness is over on the right. If I just grab this handle and I move that up, I'm going to see because basically I'm raising my shadow detail or I'm making it darker. So this is kind of similar to what we were looking at with levels and curves as well. Let's work with the highlights a little bit. Let's bring them up. Maybe too bright. Yeah, we start losing detail in there, but I can also adjust the tint that we have going on there. Maybe I kind of want something like this, make it look a little filmish and we can raise or lower the saturation or the intensity, but that's essentially how this works. Let's go with the midtones also. So if I want to maybe make those purple, I don't know. We're just guessing at this point. I'm doing some extreme stuff. Let's make them yellow and intensity is all the way up and we can actually brighten the midtones as well or make them darker depending on the look that you want. If you want to reset any of these at any time, you can double click on the center or you can hit the reset tool, but it's the same thing as we have shadows, midtones, and highlights. And that kind of is my point of this whole thing. All of these tools are essentially doing the same thing. We have the histogram because I want you to see in terms of shadows, midtones, and highlights. And then every other tool thereafter, sliders are super basic, but when we get into levels, we get into curves adjustments and now color wheels, it's the same thing. Each of those three regions can have the area where it lives. You can intensify your shadows. You can intensify your highlights or you can move your midtones to adjust your contrast. You can also tint each one of those to a specific color and you can adjust the intensity there as well. So my point being is that if you can get your head around the basic concept of how these four tools and the histogram work, this will allow you to pretty much work in anything of your choice. Now some of these tools don't appear in every application. For instance, in Capture One, we have levels. In Lightroom, we do not. And so there's some differences between them. But those are the five tools that I recommend everybody get their head around. If you have any questions, drop me a comment. I will see you guys in the next video. Until then, later.